10 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started with the work session for April 1st, and I, I wanted to have a good joke for April Fool's, but I figure the, the fact that we're all having to work on April Fool's Day is enough, so I uh, want to welcome everybody, thank everybody for being here. Um, we've got the agenda for the work session, and then we're immediately after going to have a call where we have two different, two different resolutions we've got to go through. Um, and kicking off with department updates, I'm going to ask Sheriff Craig, would you mind going first? And sure. Uh, don't really have a whole lot to report this morning over from what we had last year, or the, the last meeting, but uh, we're doing very well on some recruiting and hiring. Uh, moving forward, we've got some good folks uh, coming to work for us over the next uh, month or so. So that's working out well. Uh, a lot of training going on, working uh, with uh, your fire department. Uh, we want to thank them for their cooperation with uh, some of the active shooter training that they're doing. Uh, actually train the trainers so now the fire department and sheriff's office can work together and train our staff about having to bring folks in from outside of the state to do the training. So we're excited about that. We was able to uh, make a donation to Pickens Fire and Jasper Fire with uh, the, uh, the bulletproof vest, the tactical vest, so in the event that they have to go into an active shooter situation they are uh, a little more prepared and that was able to be done with the uh, partnership that we have with uh, I think Cobb County made a donation to us with those vests we were able to <coughs> repurpose those and get those out to uh, the fire department so uh, you know, things, are, things are actually going pretty well there uh, this morning we have got a couple of presentations if this would be the appropriate time uh, we didn't all just show up to kind of be here for all the other stuff, but uh, we do before appreciate you, Right before you do that, though, based on what you were talking about with your training, and I know that you and I both got copied on an email from Sloan from this morning, but the, there was a, a bad car accident, a uh, head-on collision car accident this morning, and one of the deputies was the first on the scene, and, and using that same training, applied a tourniquet to someone who potentially had a severed artery in his leg that according to the, the initial fire response said that had he not that, that that guy would have would have most likely bled out so i think that, that that's just incredible i mean to see it already playing out i didn't mean to cut you off before you went into to the other but yeah I, that's that's the same training that we're doing Sloan has taught us uh, for several years now with uh, the tourniquets and how to apply them properly and, and working closely with us with that and the shooter and the, and the tourniquet is just part of that so I'd say this morning was a, a prime example of where that training has come in handy. Yeah. And, and luckily not involved with an active shooter, but you know, it was something as, such as an accident. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, this morning we've got, uh, our office does employ the month, each month, and uh, we send out our notice to uh, the staff. The staff makes recommendations back to us before we, uh, we choose that employee. Um, so uh, this morning we're, we appreciate the opportunity to, to be able to present our employee of the month in front of this board and uh, so I'm going to ask uh, Captain Cagle if he would come up and then uh, also Charlie. Charlie Vickers is our uh, auxiliary president and uh, we're able to provide the employee of the month program with uh, the sheriff's auxiliary so if you would come up. Uh, so January's employee of the month this, uh, this year is uh, Andrea Flagg. Uh, Andrea uh, came to us from Bartow County Sheriff's Office. She has, uh, uh, I don't know how many years of experience, but I don't want to tell her age here, but she's got a lot of experience in uh, law enforcement and uh, working with investigations. And uh, we met her through our relationship and just doing other investigations and working with uh, Bartow County. Was able to uh, talk her into coming to work for us. Uh, and I tell you, Andrea, one thing that sticks out in my mind with Andrea is she is. She's a great lady. Uh, she worked really well with the public. She's, uh, you know, she really come over and fit in with us and uh, hit the ground running. She's, she's only been with us for four months, but uh, very proud to have Andrea and her experience uh, being a part of our office. That's Captain Cagle, to, uh, uh, who actually gets to supervise her and work with her. Uh, I think she requires a whole lot of supervision, but no, she does. Uh, she joined the sheriff's office not long after I did in the fall. And uh, part of my job is to review all the reports that the patrol does each day, assign what needs to be assigned to a detective with some follow-up. And so I assigned a, uh, a case to Andrea, which literally had no chance of being solved. Uh, but uh, she worked hard with it. Uh, the victim uh, is a disabled Vietnam-era vet, so it's important uh, 
to try to do the best we could with that. And uh, she literally turned, I'll, I'll clean this up, she literally turned chicken manure into chicken salad. <laughs> she did a really good job. She, made, she sawed it. And while she was sawing that one, uh, literally uncovered more crimes and, and saw those too. So she's very good with the public. She specializes in crimes against children and sex crimes, and she does a wonderful job. She really does. Thank you. Come on, man. Congratulations, and on behalf of the uh, Sheriff's Office building, I'd like to present you this certificate uh, on the honor you've been given today, and uh, we just appreciate your work, and uh, we're just proud to, uh, to work with you. Congratulations. So we'd like to also present our February Employee of the Month, and uh, that's when we go through to the young guy that's been working with us for uh, about three years, roughly, give or take a few months, and uh, Mr. Dalton Gazaway. So uh, Dalton, um, say it, uh, came to work for us, worked at the jail for about a year before we were able to uh, get him in the mandate. Uh, shortly after that, we got him out of the uniform patrol, and. Uh, I'm not really going to go into a whole lot other than, again, uh, just like Andrea, uh, um, is, is super guy, does an excellent job dealing with the public, talking to folks. He's here because he wants to be here, not because he can't go somewhere else. And uh, as y'all know, how important it is to have good employees. And uh, this is just, you know, one of the standards that we have. And uh, you can really set the bar high for these younger guys coming in, following in their footsteps. My last uh, Sergeant Jody Weaver come up. Uh, <coughs> Say a few words. I wrote down a few things I wanted to say um, about Deputy Gassaway. Um, he was one of the youngest applicants that I ever processed um, when I was over at the Office of Professional Standards, and uh, it was evident how much um, time and effort that he invested in earning his position with the agency. And, and he's always had a mindset of earning everything that he's had um, during his time as a detention officer. Uh, he worked extremely hard. He took his position and duties extremely seriously. Um, at an age where a lot of his peers were focused on less mature things, Gasway, through his own actions, made it very clear that a rewarding career in law enforcement was at the very top of his life goals. Um, during pre-mandate, he was always punctu punctual, always eager to learn, always showed up with positive attitude, and he was the only cadet that could outrun me. So. <laughs> um, um, as a cadet, when he went into the Law Enforcement Academy, um, he earned the uh, coveted Top Gun Award for his proficiency in firearms. Uh, he really made our agency proud every step of the way through the Academy. Um, while having the privilege to work alongside him in Uniform Patrol, um, he's demonstrated very admirable skills such as officer safety, time management, drive, self-motivation, work ethic, punctuality, and dependability, and his demeanor and professionalism intact when serving the public is second to none. Uh, recently, when the opposite day shift was short-staffed, Gasway was the first deputy to volunteer to temporarily change shifts to ensure coverage. His explanation for doing this was, I'm young and don't have kids, so it only makes sense. Um, he feels that it's natural for, uh, to, to make sacrifices for others, and it's evidence of his servant's heart, and it is what makes him one of the best law enforcement officers that this agency will ever have the privilege to employ. So I'm proud of you, um, your dedication, and I love working with you today. Proud of you. success has come from folks like Dolly and Andrea and uh, the staff that we have. And, and I'm very proud of that. So thank you. You guys make my job easy. <laughs> <laughs> and Dalton, I'd also like to congratulate you on behalf of the Sheriff's Auxiliary and 
I've never heard anything but good stuff about you, and uh, it's just a pleasure to work with you. Congratulations. Thank you. So we'll go on through as far as getting more uh, more updates, and we'll just kind of work our way down. Roy, over to the assessor side. Uh, today's April first, the last day of the return period for all the property owners, the personal property account, homestead exemptions, things of that nature. Uh, I want to thank my staff and uh, the public. The public's had a good response in uh, giving us updates on their properties and their accounts this year. Um, still looking forward to getting our new aerial photography online for everybody to view to see the changes the pictures Sorry, have had in the last three you. years. Um, as everybody can tell. <laughs> <laughs> As everybody can tell, things are really changing in Pickens County. My wife and I wanted to go to camp to the doctor's office yesterday. It only took us 10 minutes to go from uh, sitting at McDonald's to getting on the interstate to go south because there's so much traffic, there's so much growth in this area. Um, so I want to thank all the departments for working with all the new customers, landowners, people are coming here just as fast as they can come. Uh, we're getting a lot of compliments about everybody that they deal with in Pickens County. They can actually ask people questions and get answers. And uh, people are loving coming to Pickens County. So that's what we're seeing from our end. And I uh, want to thank my staff that I'm working like a government mule uh, on weekends and everything to try to keep up with the changes that we're seeing. So thank the staff. Uh, all the staff for all their hard work. So since you're saying it that way, every time I come here on a weekend to work in my office, the only vehicle that's here is Stephanie that's in here working. So I would say the staff should specifically include her by name in this this point. So yes, yes. definitely here day and night. Yes. So. And I'm not wearing my shoes on those days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Daniel, over at the tax commissioner's side. Plus. <clears throat> it, it, things, are, things are going well. Uh, our, our team has done a phenomenal job in there. Got a good, good group of ladies uh, working in there. They do a great job for me every day. Uh, today actually is the deadline for mobile home taxes. So we've got, we've got through that season. So today's the deadline on that, getting that behind us. Um, you know, we're in the process of um, recruiting and taking a lot of applications, hiring one more person in there. And so, you know, that's going well. We had a lot, lot, lot of those to go through. A lot, a lot of folks applied for that job. So uh, we've been very thankful for that. We've had a good group of people to choose from. And, I, you know, as far as down the pipe, uh, I'd say that, you know, you know, space, space is probably a little bit of an, uh, an issue maybe back in our office. You know, before, whenever we used to, uh, uh, you know, mail things in, they were having to retain a lot of those files and keep them on site. And so, um, and also with the, uh, the Department of Revenue, the Department of Driver Services in talks, considering uh, starting to let uh, you know, driver's license come up under the tax commissioner's office as far as allowing them to renew driver's license, which is something I would like to happen uh, for this county is for us to be able to do something like that. That's not finalized yet, but if something like that were to take place, we would obviously need more space. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's something you know, we have to look at in, in the future. But everything is going, you know, going great in this office. Uh, you know, like I said, we've got a great team, great staff, and they're just doing a great job for us. I know you mentioned um, they've tied the computer systems together. Have they gave a time period as to when they expect to well, start pushing that out to the local county? The Department of Revenue and the Department of Driver Services have not come into a complete agreement on how they want to do things yet. You've got two separate government entities that's kind of in talks with each other. So I don't know what the timeline on that is as, as of yet. And like I said a second ago, I would love for that to happen in our county, keep, you know, make it more convenient for our citizens and not have to go to Canton and Blue Ridge and, and stuff like that, so for us to be able to do something like, like that. Uh, so, what, so we're still mostly waiting on the Department of Driver Services to see about how they, they want to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kilgore, where are you finding? Uh, yes, sir. Um, had a pretty good month this month. Um, almost 
uh, almost forty thousand dollars more than what we did in the month of March last year, which was the first month that COVID really hit us. But uh, our total for this month, uh, this last month, was forty-eight thousand six hundred forty-one dollars and seventy cents, which is it's just increasing and increasing as we go along. With twenty-five building permits uh, were started and thirty certificates of occupancy were issued in the month of March. Um, I do not have the full report for y'all yet because that's uh, quite a lengthy report for the process because it has business licensing and um, alcohol permits and all the other kind of things that uh, planning and development does. But uh, the day after, we had office staff is still working on putting together that report for y'all. So y'all have that soon. But um, it's looking like it's going to be a really good year for building despite the price of materials. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Harvey, back in the, the finance world. Right. We're busy getting ready for auditors. Um, we've already uh, gone through the testing, the random testing, transaction testing that they do. They will be here, um, the audit team will be here April 29th, or 19th on Monday for, um, for their field work. They'll be here most of that week and um, should complete the audit by the first or mid June, and hopefully presented at the June um, at the June meeting, board commissioners meeting. So that's about all we're we're handling right now is just audit work. All right. If that's not enough, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I know you guys kicked off Saturday. Yes, sir. We had an opening day. Um, blessed with no rain on Saturday morning. We uh, thought we were for sure we'd get washed out. But uh, we, uh, I, I announced around 550 kids um, and coaches uh, on Saturday. We probably had upwards of 1,000 people at the park. Um, you could tell by just the lack of parking <laughs> that we were, we were very full. Um, got a full day in. Uh, we honored a young man who lost his life in 2019, Blake Millsaps. Um, we uh, dedicated Field 4 uh, to Blake uh, with a sign. And um, we had his family fill out the first pitch, so it was a it was a nice event. Um, we're going full speed uh, with baseball, softball, and t-ball uh, for the rest of April and then into May. Uh, along with all that going on, we also have the COVID-19 vaccinations that's going at the rec center. Uh, some of them are turning people through there as quickly as possible. Um, as you can tell by the parking lots being full, and thank you for the sheriff's office for. Managing traffic has helped out tremendously. Um, don't know how long that's going to last, but uh, we'll keep it open as long as they need it. So uh, it's very busy down there right now. As you said, <coughs> before yesterday, there were 689 uh, vaccinations they did in one day. So the interesting part is looking at the tags that's in the, I saw one from Ohio yesterday, so that was interesting. Yeah, there's a and because it's a statewide site, yes, sir. I mean, it, it's not just our right. residents that are going; they're they're going all over the place. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I did I did get a chance. I had a meeting at ten Saturday, so I missed the the opening. But when I came down right after that meeting was over around noon, the the park was packed. Yes. I mean, it was. I had to circle around for a while to get out to to go in, and uh, you were actually still coaching at the time when I when I got over there. But it was impressive with the crowd. Um, appreciate it. We have a great staff uh, to be able to run that many kids through in under an hour um, to get that many kids announced on the field, off the field, to get ready for games. Great staff. I mean, for my eight years, last Saturday was my eight year period and uh, I always had a very great staff to work with. So, makes it easy. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Paula, back in HR World. Well, there's not a, a lot of new things to update, but um, I know I'm thankful that COVID, the COVID numbers are coming down because the month of January, February, we were very busy with that, with uh, processing things, and the new year coming up, and we had several new hires and terminations, but um, for March, we've just been focusing on you know, trying to update some of our procedures and things that we need to update and just looking to see how we can improve. I just think well, COVID has slowed down, and um, I'd like to remind the department heads that um, the board of commissioners had extended the emergency paid sick leave through the 31st of March, so that has expired, and hopefully that will be a, you know, we won't be, need to use that so much anymore. Good. Okay. 
I know Kurt took a week off just on vacation. He really hadn't been doing anything with the roads in the last uh, <laughs> <laughs> few days, but I'm surprised you're still awake sitting still for this long. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, what, what else you got going on in the, in the road department? Yeah, before? if y'all noticed, we had a storm last Thursday night. <laughs> uh, and, as, you know, this being my first time going through something like this, is the first time I've kind of got to see the behind the scenes of a lot of our EMA and it was it's a privilege there's a lot that the public the public doesn't see that these people do you know they put in a lot of hours uh, the EMA department the 911 the sheriff's department they all work really well together whenever something like this hits the fan <laughs> uh, but as far as where we're at on the roads um, Hobson and Evans is the only two we still got closed um, there's significant damage. I've got a quick rundown here of the ones that sustain rather significant damage. Upper Twin Mountain Lakes, again Hobson, Upper Grandview, Lakeshore, Grand, Grandview Road itself, High, Jones, Hickory Cove, Bright, 05, uh, another issue on Grandview, uh, Windy Ridge, and Upper Salem. The, uh, the worst spot we've got right now is a spot on Upper Twin Mountain Lakes. We got a shoulder that kicked off into the lake, and it's something that's beyond me and my crews to do. So we've got we're getting together pricing um, to get that fixed. Um, the same thing. We're still assessing damage on a lot of the the roads around. I, of course, I've had crews out. That's something else I, I need to give uh, a pat on the back to my crews. That everybody come in Friday. It was it was all hands on deck, and um, they've really been been working and, and putting in the extra hours and extra effort to get our roads back open and you know prioritize you know get the roads back open and you know I know I know the public has got a lot of you know stopped up culverts, stopped up ditches, and I want to let them know that we are working toward that. But we're we've got to get our roads back open, and we're, we've not forgot about you. We've got a list, and we are working through it. But uh, just be patient with us, and, and we will get get to your driveway pipe that stopped up eventually. Um, but that that's kind of where we're at right now, and um, again, we're still assessing and uh, working through our list. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go back to my hammock here in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I will. Uh, when you mentioned the, the damage on Upper Twin Mountain Lake, the, the engineers actually were getting the price. They, he said he was going to have an email before we had the meeting today to, to know, um, but he was working on a draft to try to send something to the state for the emergency El Nigue fund because we, it is substantial, the, the cost in, in the initial uh, price estimate. So, but he hadn't got the email to me before we got started. So they're working on preparing that so that we can try to get funding. I know that they had done something similar with the city with Jeanette Drive washing away and had a response within 24 hours. They had a response on it. So we're hoping that once we get that number, we'll, we'll know. And I know they've been back and forth. Kurt's been out there with the, he's bouncing from engineers to road crews. And, and uh, I know Tanner in particular, one of the dispatchers had actually sent something on the night of the storm on that Thursday night. He was the, and, it seems like every time we have a storm or an incident, whether it's it's snow or flooding, Tanner's the guy that's on call. So uh, I would like to make a recommendation that we probably don't put him on call through the rest of the tornado season before we bring him back because it it seems like. But they were bragging on that that he was immediately responding to to every single one and trying to get the cones and barricades out to block those roads so they could get out to fix them. So uh, definitely want to make sure to recognize him for for what he's doing. And Kirk, you're doing an awesome job for a newbie. I'll take all the credit I can get. <laughs> and I, I'm taking credit for a lot of people below me. I mean, they have, we really have an awesome team over there. That, um, and not, you know, it's like Sheriff Craig was saying, you know, I can only be as good as the ones, ones below me. Good job. I, I sent him pictures of one that I went out Friday when we were trying to do damage assessments. and. 
I would have swore they were going to close the road and that we were going to have to build a new bridge and everything in the world. And within a couple hours, he sent me something that it was open, that they had it all fixed. And I drove back out there because I really didn't 100% believe that was possible. And sure enough, they had it opened up and, and looking better than it was before the storm had hit. So uh, I, was, I was impressed. That was awesome. So. Ms. Christie, I know you all been working on the 911 phone system. Uh, you got it all. Got a new up. phone in last week. Thank y'all. The girls are getting adjusted to it. And guys, they're getting adjusted to it. It's working great so far. Got it going. Justin's keeping me busy with addresses. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Jim is still uh, still with us as the the marshal through through mid month. But Cole uh, Cole Connell, I guess this is a good time to introduce you. He's transferring over. You can see he's kind of sitting on the edge with the sheriff's office people over here. <laughs> But he's transferred over from the, the sheriff's office to, to step into the role of, of our marshal. And so Jim's been working with him, kind of getting trained and, and up and going and uh, giving him a few days to to get going. But I, I, I want to first introduce you as, as the new marshal, but at the same time, uh, any, any updates I know you're working on? Of course, still in the uh, transition phase. Uh, Jim's been a great, big help. Um, you know, just a lot of paperwork and stuff right now. Uh, of course, changing some forms and, uh, of course, picking up cases and stuff that he uh, still had pending and then, you know, getting new cases. But, you know, as of right now, it's just, uh, just a lot of a lot of paperwork, I can say. So, but it's coming along. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it on the department head side for, for updates that are here. I know that um, Philip is, is out this week, but they've got a big project they're getting ready to kick off, I think, the... Second week of, of April, that's the joint splice project that they're working on on Jones Mountain to upgrade the, the water lines through there. And that'll be kicking up. I know in April, I'm not sure if it's still going to be the second or if it may have been moved to the third week. They're waiting on uh, some of the valves uh, and meters that they'd ordered. So as soon as they're in, they're going to start that uh, start that process. Which fortunately, we hadn't started it right before the, the rains that we just got because that would have that been a, a major hindrance on digging those trenches. Um, and then Johnny, I know we've been. Jim has reached out to us uh, this week, so when Johnny's back, he'll be he'll be working with them and Good. see if they're. We, we don't know the status of the declaration for our area um, in terms of the amount of damage, whether they're going to declare anything at this point or not. But it, we're we're staying in touch with them to make sure. On that side. Johnny is good at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I know the town of Talking Rock had had a significant amount. I've been in, in contact with them quite a bit. They had a, one small road. Uh, Creekside. Creek Creekside. Side. Yeah, road. a new creek, but I was trying to remember Creekside that, that just completely flooded. So the residents that were down through there and the, the Red Cross and a couple other organizations have been reaching out and working with them. I know one of Sloan's guys went out to do an assessment to meet with them and find out what needs they had. So. Trying to work with them, and they had a, a couple businesses, the pottery store and, and talking about got got completely. I think there were a couple feet of, of water and mud that, that had washed into it. So they're uh, they're working through and, and trying to get an assessment on their park and, and a lot of things there. Obviously, the city of Jasper, we've we've all seen pictures of Jeanette Drive washed away and um, the cove there at the water had, had gotten up. So they had some compromised water line issues that they've been working through. And we, I know Philip had reached out and offered our, our crews to help them yeah. to get back online. And I uh, think they were able to, to get that all back up and going. So Good. it's been kind of the dominating factor in the last couple of weeks in the office. We had two offices yesterday when the rain hit again that started to flood into the walls from the downspout. So we, we were able to get those kind of sealed off, but we're gonna have some damage to to a couple sheets of sheetrock and some carpet and make sure we get that repaired and up and going. So, moving forward with that. Yeah. Good so, so that is, uh, that's all. Do y'all have any other items y'all want to discuss during the work session? No, I had a couple of calls and I called Kirk and he responds and... Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. We did, uh, did, did you get the copy of the speed study on the country drive? Did he email that to you? Okay. Just interesting speeds that we're going through there. So. Yeah, I couldn't really. What was the fastest? It was really high. 88. 88. That's on, right. On Bentry Drive. So uh, we'll take that study and send it to our engineers to get them to evaluate the, the speed limit through there because I know the average and mean and mean speeds so that we can kind of see are we, we in range where it's supposed to be. And then if they can then send it to the state, 
they may be able to, to kick it back to the sheriff's office for a radar permit at that point. So we, we'll send our study to them so that we don't we don't have to pay them to gather the data since we gathered it. We'll get that over to them. What was the speed limit there? 20? 20. That's, it, it's, that's yeah, on the front end, it's very low. When you yeah. get to the hills, 20 makes sense. But that front from Cove Road to most of the cars where that sign was sitting, um, there were only a handful that were going. 20. Uh, when you look at the data that was on there, it was 35 is the average that's going through there. That was the, the, the pretty consistent. I think the 85th percentile speed was at 35. Um, but we'll, we'll let the engineers give us a report to tell us if that if that needs to be adjusted or if it doesn't. So rather than... I've always heard you can go 10 over without getting a ticket right <laughs> <laughs> I really use that a lot. <laughs> Before she gets herself in trouble with the law, I think we'll adjourn the work session <laughs> in protection of uh, Commissioner Denny. No, we do have a, an agenda for, for two items to move into a call meeting when we finish this, but we'll adjourn this work session at uh, exactly 10.30. Mm -hmm. um, so if anyone wants to, to step out at that time, you're, you're free to. We'll move straight into the, to the next portion of the meeting.